Yo, what's up? My name is Sermis, and I want to talk to you about how to overcome plateaus. So I think what a lot of people do is they they could play scenarios that are too easy or too hard for them, and it doesn't help them. Like if something's too hard, then it doesn't help you build the foundation of your aim in the same way. So it's okay if you want to do a scenario that's just an easier version. Like for example, like passive vault tech, you could see that it, there's an easier version of the scenario. But what I think less people know is that um, for example, like, let's say you wanted to slow it down because it's it's too hard, like the easy version is still too hard for you. <laughs> then uh, you can click the arrow to download it to your hard drive. Then go click local scenarios on top. And then look at this. You have passive vault tech easy. You could click edit, click yes. And then go over ch to challenge right here and over on time scale, you could just type whatever speed that you think will suit you. By default, it'll be on one. You could just change that to like like 0.5, be half speed, hit save as, and you could just do half speed, pass you, full tech, easy. You could name it obviously, whatever you want, but. And it'll be the same scenario, except just on half speed. Usually the problem is though, not that people are doing scenarios too hard for them, but usually, people are doing scenarios that are too easy for them or they're just going through the motions. So you wanna make sure that you're challenging yourself because that's usually how you improve at things. You wanna hit the, the sweet spot where a scenario isn't too difficult, that's too much of a challenge, but it should challenge you. You could also do, like let's say you wanna improve at like one well, six targets small. You don't have to always just be grinding this scenario. What you could do is you may already know this, but you could do like one will six targets extra small, and that'll make you more precise when you're doing the other version. And you could also do like one wall, 9,000 targets to increase with your click speed. Or you could, um, something else that you could do is you, you could improve smoothness, for example, like you could do like thin gauntlet is really good. My smoothness is really bad compared to my static dot scores because I'm Grandmaster in Static, but I'm like I'm only Diamond in Tracking. So I, I should probably grind uh, Smoothness, but this is a great way to improve it at um, not only Tracking, but also your Static Dots. So that's more like, that's more practical advice. Something else you could do is um like you could change your sense. If you're doing one wall, six targets small, if you go on like 30 centimeters and train on like like a pretty higher sense for a while and then move to a lower sense it'll make you feel like way more precise and it'll, it'll make it feel way easier so that's another thing you could do i think a lot of a lot of times people hit plateaus not because of what they're actually doing wrong with the decisions they make inside the aim trader although that's definitely a big part of it a lot of what people do is that they don't trust the process i mean you have to be patient with improvement and you're not going to get pbs every single day it's easy to get down on yourself when you haven't seen improvement in a while. But I really think as long as you're challenging yourself and you're actively trying to get better and you're able to identify the weak points in your aim and you put in practice over a long period of time, you will improve. I think people overcomplicate it and they get down on themselves like, like, oh, I'm just, I don't have the genetics, dude. I, I, I just can't improve no matter what I do. I'm quitting, dude. It's like, I mean, just keep practicing. You'll improve. It's not easy, but just because you're not improving doesn't mean that like you don't have the genetics to aim. I've reached my limit. I'm silver in vault -Tec benchmarks, and I haven't improved in one week. What what should I do, guys? I I'm out of answers. Like it, it takes sometimes it could take a long time. Trust the process is a is a something that I think is important. So if you want to improve at um, at Valorant, I think that's a little bit more complicated because there's a lot of aspects to Valorant. I think the number one thing that helps me personally is acknowledging that you're trash and. The reason why I say that is because knowing that you have a lot to learn takes you away from that position where you're on autopilot and you're just going through the motions. Acknowledging that the decisions that you're making in game could be making you lose rounds is really important because it makes you question everything that you do. Like, eh, maybe I shouldn't have peeked there. Maybe I, I should have helped my teammate and I should have rotated faster. You should be questioning what you're doing. If you, if you acknowledge that 
you have no idea what you're doing, it'll make you improve way faster. And you, you probably already know this if you didn't realize it. Like, for example, what happens when you just play a brand new game that you've never played before? What you do is you realize like, oh, I'm garbage at this game and I have no idea how to play it because it's your first time touching the game. So what? When you realize that you're garbage, you could see all the things that you're doing wrong and all the things that you're learning like really, really fast. And what happens when you're brand new to a game is that people tend to improve really, really fast early on. But then they hit a point where they're like, eh, I, I got a feel for this. I kind of know what I'm doing wrong. You don't know what you're doing. That's probably why you plateaued. Or it could be a reason. I mean, there, there's lots of aspects to it, but that's like one example of that might be why you're plateauing in Valorant because you assume that you know everything. Never assume that you know everything because you could always be improving. Even people that are radiant in Valorant are garbage compared to pro players. And the the worst pro players are garbage compared to the best pro players. And I, garbage is like a harsh word, but that's I'm just trying to get my point across that there's always ways that you could improve and there's always things that you could learn. I could go into more practical tips with, with improving in Valorant. This video is just about plateaus, but um, there's more practical advice like valuing your life. Some people, especially at lower ranks, they think like, well, it's okay if I die this round because I'll just respawn next round. Uh, the thing is like, there's a middle ground where you don't want to bait your team, but at the same time, in a lot of situations, you just want to actively try to survive because if you're alive, you automatically provide tons of value for your team. You don't take risky peaks for no reason. Everything should be like calculated and everything should be a thought out decision. Well, maybe not everything, <laughs> but <laughs> it's a good rule of thumb if you're newer. If that's something that you'd want a video on, like actually how to improve at Valorant or like tips for Valorant, I guess I could make a video on that, but anyway, you will break your plateaus if you grind, and if you actively try to improve, and you keep an open mind, and you don't get too down on yourself, I know plateaus suck, dude, nobody likes plateaus, but you got this, peace out.